Templars are a very obvious attempt to fix some of the problems with sword-based rangers. They start with a superior melee attack, and quickly get access to several abilities to help make it safer to use. They also have several unique Psy-based abilities that separate them from the Psy operative class, both attacks, and also buffs and debuffs. This means that Templars fill a unique role on the battlefield that, while still somewhat risky, is very useful in certain situations. Unlike every other class, Templars don't have a primary weapon. They only have their rent gauntlets and an auto pistol secondary. The auto pistol functions similarly to the sharpshooter's pistol, and you can even get several of their abilities as random XCOM unlocks, such as lightning hands and quick draw. In terms of equipment, Templars are probably the class I'm the most flexible with. You could take grenades as a backup, you could take special ammo to buff the auto pistol during overwatches and lost missions, you could take a mimic beacon for when there's more than one enemy left alive. For this particular build, I've gone with AP rounds, but there are plenty of options. The Templar's ability branches are Psyblade, Dynamo, and Sage. Psyblade is obviously focused on melee attacks, Dynamo is about combat-based Psy abilities, and Sage is about generating focus and supportive abilities. There are three base abilities, as well as the Auto Pistol. Their defining ability is Rand. This is a melee attack like any other, you can do it on a single move or a dash, but it cannot miss, unless the target is immune. It starts at 4 to 5 damage, and increases as you upgrade your gauntlets, and also as you generate focus during a mission. Right away this is a step up from the ranger's slash, because regardless of what happens, you know you will get the damage no matter what. Also, because it's guaranteed, you'll never get a grazed hit from high dodge enemies. Using Rend also gives a bonus action called Momentum. This is a single move which allows you to pull back from an exposed position, or otherwise relocate. You can think of it like the implacable skill from Rangers, except you always get it, even if you don't kill the enemy. Finally, Rend generates one point of focus if you kill an enemy. We'll be discussing focus more in a minute. There is technically also a chance to disorient, stun, or knock back the enemy, but the chances are so small, 5 to 10%, that it's usually not worth considering. All of this is a significant step up from the ranger's slash ability, but unfortunately you can never escape the risk of activating more pods when you run in to do a melee attack. This means that while Templars are better, you still have to be careful when using them. The next ability is Bolt. This is a turn ending attack that cannot miss, and ignores armor. It costs 1 point of focus to use, and can arc to nearby targets if you're at focus level 2 or higher. It starts at 2 to 5 damage, and increases as you upgrade your gauntlets. This is a nice little bit of guaranteed damage if you can't reach the target for a rend, or just don't want to risk it. An interesting note is that the damage is actually increased against psionic enemies, like sectoids and advent priests. For conventional gauntlets, this is 4 to 7 damage, which is pretty respectable. The only other thing is that, unlike rend, the damage isn't affected by focus level. While you probably won't use it very often, it's a decent little fallback. Lastly is Focus. This is a passive that allows you to gain focus during missions, increasing both your base stats, and also making certain abilities better, such as Rend. By default, you can get up to two levels of focus. Focus is both a resource and a boost. Generally speaking, the more focus you have, the more effective your abilities are. For Rend, each block of focus gives plus one damage. This means with a total of two focus, your Rend is now doing six to seven damage, which can potentially insta-kill intermediate enemies such as officers and stun lancers. For base stats, you get plus one mobility and plus ten dodge for each block of focus, 
allowing you to rend further and avoid more damage. Plus 20 dodge won't help very often, but you can improve your base stat through covert actions and PCS upgrades, allowing focus to make more of a difference. At corporal rank, the first three unlocks are parry, aftershock, and amplify. Parry is a passive that upgrades rent. Now when you trigger momentum, you can choose to spend it on a parry instead. This allows you to completely block the first attack against the Templar. Like momentum could be compared to implacable, parry can be compared to the ranger's untouchable. Likewise, whereas the ranger's ability requires a kill, you can trigger parry any time you use Ren, even if you don't get the kill. The only difference is that you can't choose to both move and block, like you can with the ranger's abilities. Parry is an incredibly strong ability though, because as long as you only have one enemy active, you can basically treat your Templar as an infinite mimic beacon. With clever positioning, you can bait the enemy into attacking the Templar, procking their parry and stopping them from attacking another unit. This makes Templars particularly useful on covert actions that have a chance of ambush, because aside from the first reinforcement drop, every pot only has one enemy. As long as you can manage the lost, you can continually parry each enemy until it's dead. I almost always take parry. Not because the other abilities aren't good, but because parry is just so incredibly useful. Aftershock is another passive upgrade, this time making Bolt also mark the target, giving plus 15 aim to all shots. This is kind of like hollow targeting for Grenadiers, except the attack does less damage but ignores armor. It also affects enemies that Bolt arcs to, allowing you to mark multiple targets at higher focus levels if they're clustered up enough. Also interesting is that it actually stacks with hollow targeting, allowing you to apply a huge plus 30 aim boost to a high priority target. The only bad thing about it, is that you have to give up a Ren to use it, but this might not be a problem if you're fighting some of the late game enemies that you don't want to get close to. Amplify is an active ability that marks a target, causing them to take 33% more damage from a set number of attacks. It costs one focus, and is not a turn ending action. The number of attacks it lasts for is determined by your focus level when using it, one attack for each focus level. Against high profile targets, and in the late game when you have high damage weapons, this can be a pretty decent option. Especially since it doesn't end your turn, you can throw it out using your first action, and then rend or volt with your second. Both of these abilities are strong contenders that I tend to consider doubling back for later when I have spare AP. Target neutralized. Next up, at Sergeant, you have Overcharge, Pillar, and Stun Strike. Overcharge is a passive that simply gives you a 33% chance to generate a block of focus when you use Rend. It only procs if you don't kill the target. This can be an okay pick if you want a backup in case you need to attack a target you can't kill. But most of the time you're usually planning for the Templar to finish the target in order to get the guaranteed focus charge. Still, more focus is always nice, and especially in the late game, you can't always guarantee you'll be rending targets that you can kill. Pillar is an active ability that creates a block of full cover at a target location. It costs one focus, and it isn't a turn ending action. The pillar lasts for the same number of turns as focus levels you have when using it. The ability to create full cover is interesting, but not always useful. You could create a pillar at your rend location, if you're close enough, but you already have momentum, and likely parry to cover most situations. For your other units, there's often plenty of full cover around already. The one use case I can think of, is using pillar to create a safe flank for your ranger to take a shot with. It's pretty situational though. Stun strike is an active ability that has a chance to knock an enemy back, potentially out of their cover. It costs one focus, 
has a two turn cooldown, and also isn't a turn ending action. The chance starts at 70% with one focus, and increases by 5% for each additional focus level. This could be loosely compared to the Grenadier's demolition ability, something to potentially remove an enemy's cover. However, this doesn't end your turn, allowing you to also rend or bolt a target. Unlike demolition though, the base chance is lower most of the time, and stun strike uses focus, which requires a bit of setup in order to regain. It can also just glitch out and not move the unit back, even if you land a hit. Also worth mentioning is it has a chance to disorient the target, 20% for each focus level. So at focus level 2, you have a 40% chance to disorient the target, which is not terrible. This ability feels fairly unreliable to me, but I can see it being useful in some situations. At Lieutenant, there's Deflect and Channel. Deflect is a passive that gives you a small chance to completely avoid a ranged attack when you have focus. It starts at 30%, and increases by 10% for each additional focus level. This is a fallback in case you need to parry a target, but there's more than one enemy active. The chances are actually pretty good, at a third to half chance to completely ignore the damage. It's important to note that parry will always be used first before deflect is procced. Also, deflect can't block melee attacks or reaction fires. Considering the Templar might trigger additional pods by running in, and you're likely to get at least one block of focus when you rend a target, this can actually be a semi-decent fallback. It also doesn't cost any focus, so there's no downside to taking it. Personally I prefer to use Mimic Beacons and Parry, rather than rely on a coin flip to either avoid damage, or potentially get crit. Channel is a passive that causes enemies to have a small chance to drop a collectible, granting one level of focus. The chance for regular enemies is 20%, and 50% for psionic enemies. This is a pretty nice way of getting additional focus, even if the Templar isn't the one killing the enemies. The chances are pretty good, you'll likely get at least one or two blocks on most missions. Also, channel can proc on enemies that the Templar kills, meaning they get one block from rent, and another from channel. It's just a good solid pick if you want to reach max focus quickly. For Captain, you get Reflect, Invert, and Deep Focus. Reflect is a passive upgrade for Deflect, making it actually reflect the damage back at the attacker when you have two or more focus. This is actually a straight upgrade for Deflect, because the base chance is 40%, instead of the 30% for Deflect. The damage isn't guaranteed though, Reflect is set to a flat 75% chance to hit by default. Still, if you like Deflect and also want to try for some extra damage during the enemy's turn, it can be a good option. Depending on how much health you want to gamble, you could end up with some pretty amazing reflect damage. Invert is an active ability where you swap places with any enemy you can see. It costs one focus, and isn't a turn ending action. There's some pretty creative things you can do with this ability. To start with, you can use it to swap places with a high priority target, bringing them right next to your squad for follow-up shots, and also potentially putting the Templar in rending distance of another enemy. You can also use it to cluster enemies for an AoE attack, move a dangerous target away from your squad, etc. It definitely requires a different kind of thinking to appreciate, one which I admit, I'm not very good at. Deep Focus is a passive that increases your max focus count to 3, further improving all abilities that are based on focus level. I've been hinting at this ability for a while now, and I can't think of any Templar builds where you wouldn't want this. You can increase your rent damage by a further plus 1, your dodge goes up by another plus 5% to 25 total, Volt can hit 2 additional targets, etc etc. 
It's hard to understate just how impactful this ability is. It means most abilities that cost a bar of focus are now even more effective. I pretty much always take this ability, there's no reason not to. Next, at Major, there's Arcwave and Exchange. Arcwave is a passive that upgrades Rend, causing it to also create a wave attack in the direction you're rending. It deals 2 damage for each focus level, and 1 damage at 0 focus. Some things to bear in mind are that it doesn't do any friendly fire damage, and it can also generate focus on kills. But it also destroys cover, which can be a double-edged sword depending on how close to your other units you are. Unless you're getting the full 6 damage at focus level 3, this can be pretty awkward to arrange multi-kills with. Still, free damage is always good, and against melee enemies that like to cluster around you, it can be pretty decent. Exchange is the obvious twist on Invert. It's an active ability that allows you to instead swap places with an ally. Like Invert, it costs one focus, and isn't a turn-ending action. Whereas swapping places with an enemy can lead to some interesting possibilities, swapping with an ally is a lot less useful. Most of your other units will be in good positions nearby, so swapping with the Templar doesn't add much. If a unit is in danger, you could swap places with them to set up for a parry instead, but that's pretty situational. One interesting use case is during Avenger defense missions. If you build the defense matrix facility, you can actually swap places with your turrets, allowing you to use them to quickly mow down the objectives. Again, this is pretty situational though. Lastly, at Colonel, there's Ionic Storm, Void Conduit, and Ghost. Ionic Storm is an active ability where you run to a target and create an area of effect storm attack. It's a turn ending action that costs all of your focus, and has a 5 turn cooldown. It has a roughly 9 tile circular area, and the damage is affected by both your gauntlets tier, and your focus level. The third tier of gauntlets will do 3 to 5 damage against regular enemies at focus level 1. This damage is multiplied by your focus level, meaning at level 3 you'll be doing 9 to 15 damage. Like Bolt, the damage is also increased against psionic enemies, doing 6 to 8 damage at focus level 1, and potentially 18 to 24 damage with max focus. While it does cost all of your focus to use, it can also generate focus on kills. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you might not be able to put your Templar in good cover and also hit all of the targets you want. Otherwise this is a pretty amazing area attack if you have a good setup. Void Conduit is an interesting ability. It's an active ability that's supposed to lock a target in place for a number of actions, deal a small amount of damage, and also transfer some health to the Templar. It costs one focus, and ends the turn when used. In terms of damage, it does three initially, and then transfers two health to the Templar for each focus level you have when using it. This means at focus level three, it does nine damage total, and heals the Templar for six. The problem is it only works on humanoid enemies. Just like the Skirmisher's Justice, it doesn't work on large targets or sectoids, because they use a different animation rig. Also, due to a bug in the game, it doesn't actually stop them for any period of time, unless you have 3 focus when using it. That way the effect persists into the next turn, keeping them immobilized. The main benefit of this ability, which is difficult to talk about without spoiling parts of the game, is that there are certain enemies with extremely high mobility, that are kind of awkward to fight normally. You can actually use this ability to completely lock them in place for a turn, even at focus level 1, allowing you to easily pile on some damage. Unfortunately, there aren't many enemies in the game like this, and most other humanoid enemies are easy to deal with. At Colonel rank, this costs quite a lot of AP. The Templar has several great abilities you could unlock instead, which are useful in a lot more situations. 
Ghost is another weird ability. This one is an active ability that lets you create a pseudo-clone of the Templar from a humanoid corpse. It costs 2 focus to use, and you only get 1 charge per mission. The Ghost gets 1 bar of focus and 4 HP for each level the Templar has when using it, but its HP cannot be higher than the Templar's. It has all the same abilities the Templar does, but it can't regenerate focus, can't use the auto pistol, and can't create more ghosts. Each ability the ghost uses, including rent, will cost one focus, and when it runs out, it disappears. This can be a way to temporarily double the firepower of the Templar, allowing you to get up to three additional actions depending on how you use it. Certain actions such as deflect, and the Ranger's Blade Storm if you can get it as a random XCOM ability, don't cost focus. So you can use it to soak up a decent amount of damage, and also get additional rend slashes with good positioning. That being said, the Templar themselves can also just parry and deflect attacks, or you can bring a Mimic Beacon. If you play carefully, you probably won't get into a situation often where having this additional firepower is necessary. In the late game, you have plenty of tools to annihilate pods before they become a problem, so Ghost ends up being pretty situational. Unlike with Reapers and Skirmishers, I don't really have a definitive setup for Templars. I usually end up taking Parry, Overcharge, Channel, Deep Focus, Arc Wave, and Ionic Storm. Typically I'm looking for random XCOM abilities such as Bladestorm and Fortress, allowing you to run into the middle of pods without worrying about purifier explosions. Otherwise, I also consider doubling back for either Aftershock or Amplify. This setup is obviously built around the Rend Parry combo, and maximizing your focus as quickly as possible for more damage, as well as a few other basic damage abilities. 